Hi everybody, welcome to my second video introducing the Pentax ME Super and talking about how to use it in this video. And we're going to take a look at some of the actual functions and then at the end of the video we're going to look through the viewfinder and even though this camera doesn't actually work anymore, uh, we should be able to give you some information and some ideas about what the viewfinder is telling you. So first thing we're going to do is dismount and remount this lens so you can see how to do it. Now right now the lens is mounted, it's properly mounted as you can see I cannot take it off without forcing it and breaking it right now which is what you want. To, un to dismount the lens there's a little button right here on the side of the mount. You push it back towards the camera and now you can rotate the lens about a third or a quarter of a turn counterclockwise. And now the lens comes off and the reason it works is because this, this lens release pulls a pin into the camera body that is the pin that locks the mount in place. To mount the lens we just do that in reverse. There's an orange dot on the lens and then there's an orange dot on the mount. You just line them up. Another way of doing that, if you have a Pentax lens, there's a little white dot that lines up with the shutter release or with the lens mount release right here. That's only on Pentax lenses. Aftermarket lenses don't have that, at least none that I've seen do. And then you rotate this into place. This is also, they call this a thumb rest on the um, Pentax lenses, and it gives you a convenient place to, to mount your thumb when you're holding the camera. That's what that's for. And it actually, I kind of like that feature, although some people think it's silly and they'd be wrong. So that's how you mount and un unmount the lens. The next thing we're going to, do, going to do is load film. So to load the film, you need to open up the back of the camera. And there we go. I'm, but while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to switch this over to 1 1 25th so that it'll work. Hey, wow. Well, that's, that's the problem. That's why it's broken. You can see that it's not working so well. It's not uh, completing the, the shutter operation properly. At any rate, so you load the, the film by putting it into the film cassette uh, holding area, and then you pull the leader out and feed it into these little plastic straws here. And these do a pretty good job of holding it. So there, you take it up take it up a second time and now what you would do is you would close the back of the camera. So I'm not actually going to close it because I'm going to show you what happens in here when you take a picture. One other thing to bear in mind is that you should tighten this until there's no slack. Don't over tighten it. Don't crank it once it gets tight. Just tighten it until you feel a little bit of resistance and that will and then that way when you take a picture you can see that this is spinning. Let me lift this up so you get a better view of it. But you can see when I take a picture or when I advance the film that spins and that lets you know when this spins that you've actually loaded the film correctly and it's being taken up on the spool over here. So you close the back of it. Now after you take the, the picture the shutter activates and then you just advance it and you can see that this is rotating it's taking up the, the picture and advancing the frame to the neck the film to the next frame. There aren't set frames on film what happens is that there's it takes the image and then the image is 36 millimeters wide. It advances at 38 millimeters and then it leaves a two millimeter gap between each of the frames that you take. So it doesn't matter how, how exactly you put this in, you're gonna end up with the same result regardless of how much leader you use. That's the whole point of that. To rewind the film, you just push this button right here and Again, remember, anytime you have film in the camera, the back of the camera needs to be closed, so you should definitely not open up the camera to watch it being rewound. I'm just showing you what happens here. That's the can how it's rewound. To remove, now, when you would actually take your own film, you'd rewind it the entire way into the cassette. I'm not going to do that because uh, I want to be able to reuse this film in future videos. It's already shot. I don't want to, well, ruined. It's already been ruined. I don't want to have to ruin more film just to, you know, at any rate. So that's how you load, take pictures, and unload the film. To change the batteries, you need two LR44 batteries. Happen to have them right here. That's convenient. It's almost like I planned that. Like I brought props out with me to use them. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Not me. At any rate, so to change the batteries, you need a quarter or similarly sized coin of whatever denomination you use and 
you just turn the battery cover in the direction of the arrow and it unscrews and if you're competent with a coin like I am incompetent with a coin holy cow this should have been done like seven minutes ago anyway it should just keep unwinding and until it oh, I don't even know what's going on now why isn't that come on there we go now it's off okay so uh, boy, that right I, I, now I know I have no more street cred because uh, I've proven that I'm incompetent with taking film doors off so anyway there's a little minus sign inside the film door you probably can't see it on the video but it's a single line going across this if, you, if it, and some cameras have a plus and the minus of the plus indicate what side of the battery touches the film door so if we look at the LR44 there's a flat shiny side that's got some writing on it and in fact it's got a plus and then there's a dull side that's got a ring around it that has no writing on it this is the negative side so when we load these we want them so that the dull side with the ring around it is facing the bottom of the camera so if you're looking at it you should see no text battery should both be loaded with the negative side facing the film door now what I do is I rotate this in the direction of unscrewing it until I feel it seat nicely in the threads and that helps pre prevent cross threading although it should have done that by now seems like I've rotated it more than a full turn at this point so I've done something wrong let's try it now okay there we go that's not it just gonna just gonna keep rotating this until it works at any rate so what I do is I, I rotate it the same direction as you do to unscrew it until it seats properly there just seated and then I screw it in because that helps prevent cross threading the battery cover uh, and cross threading a battery cover is a, a serious problem it's a good way to screw up the threads and uh, if then you gotta kinda have it repaired and that's all right sucks. so we're looking through the viewfinder here and on the left side you can see that there is a time scale and that's your shutter speed from four seconds to one two thousandth of a second there's also a red th red indicator that you're over and a red indicator that you're underexposed there's also indicators up at the top for EF and M M for manual mode EF I believe for electronic flash mode so right now we're in automatic mode and what I do is I have to press the shutter and that's going to tell me that if I were to take a picture right now it would be one thirtieth of a second adjusting the aperture I can I would now be taking it at one five five hundredth and you can see that as you go from one sixtieth to one thirtieth all of a sudden it turns yellow and the reason being that at one thirtieth you don't really want to hand hold the camera one thirtieth and slower because you're likely to end up with a shaky image so one sixtieth and faster you can hand hold the camera and get a good image one that one that without camera shake so that's why it's green it's telling it's okay go ahead and take the picture now if I go to manual mode here, that's telling me that I am way overexposed right now at 1 1 25th and whatever else, so uh, whatever aperture I'm at, which doesn't make sense because I didn't change the aperture. So it's also got a green dot next to the M letting me know I'm in manual mode. Now those two black buttons we looked at on the top of the camera, let's take a look here real quickly, above the auto and below the auto, these two, if you touch the top one that increases your shutter speed and if you touch the bottom one that decreases so this goes faster the one above would go from like 1 to 1 25th to 1 2 50th this would go from 1 1 25th to 1 60th so here we are again and you can see that right now I'm at 1 1 25th if I touch up I go up to 1 500th and the bottom down button on this one's really persnickety so it's hard to get it exactly right but you can see it taking the shutter speed down now if I switch this to 1, so now I've switched it to 1, 1 25th, and it is giving me no information whatsoever. And if I go to bulb mode, it doesn't do anything either. At any rate, now we go to the center here, 
and I can't really get this to focus, but you can see here, but when I hold my hand in it, that it's got a split ring in the center, and the split ring will help you focus. When, if you have two objects, you, what you would do is you would get hor you would get them to line up in this very center ring, and that's how you would know they're in focus. And then around the center ring, there's a, a series of micro prisms that will give you fine detail focus around the center ring. And then the rest of the screen is a flat ground glass mat that you can use to, to, to do additional focus and image composition. So that's most of what we're going to talk about. There's one last thing to talk about, and that is the um, center-weighted through, through the lens meter. And what that means for center-weighted is, let's say you were looking through the camera right now and you were seeing exactly what you're seeing on screen. An area about like this constitutes 60% of the meter data. And so most of the metering is going to come from the center and the balance 40% comes from the rest of the ground glass image. And what that means is that if you have a darker area, like a shadow or um, a dark spot in your subject, like if you're taking a picture of a of a building and the, the building is white and all of the glass is black or brown and the glass is in the center or whatever is darker is in the center, then most of the metering data is going to come from the center part of that. And one thing you can do when you're taking an image is you can use this um, auto exposure compensation dial to bracket or change your image. So right now at 1x, if you meter at f8, and it says it's 125th of a second exposure. Well, if you move it to 2x, it's going to be 160th, 4x is 130th. Likewise, if you move it to 1 half, it's going to be 1 250th, and 1 quarter is going to be 1 500th. Because what that's doing is, is changing the amount of light that comes in. So 1 60th is twice as much light as 1 1 25th, 1 30th is four times as much light, two times as, 60th is two times as much, 30th is two times as much as 60, so four times as much light as 1 1 25th. Likewise, 1 2 50th is half as much light as 1 1 25th, and 1 500th, for the same reason, is one quarter the amount of light of 1 1 25th. So that's what those, uh, those five numbers are indicating. So, for instance, if you had a dark area in the center of your image, like, for instance, my lens right here is fairly dark, and you wanted to make sure that it was properly exposed, you could take one picture at 1x, or you could bracket them and do one at 2x and one at 4x, and that would account for one and two stops of exposure compensation. Same, the reverse is true. If you have a really light area in the center of your image, which is what most of your metering data is coming from, you could take one at 1x, one at a half, and one at a quarter, and that would allow you to bracket the image to account for differences in lighting. Uh, the other thing you could do is just as a practice of bracketing, always do one half, one and two x, or up to two stops in each direction, similar to how HDR photos are gathered on digital images. But the bracketing would allow you to make sure that you get the image that you want by accounting for variances in metering and things like that. So those are some tips on how to use the camera. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm pretty good about answering fairly quickly. If you have any comments, same thing. Uh, suggestions for future videos, please let me know. And if I have the equipment and technical know-how, I'm more than happy to make those for you. The, uh, if, if this video was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that my videos are, uh, are, are being well received and helping people. And if you'd like to, you can subscribe to my channel down below and you'll be notified whenever I release more camera and film photography videos. Not all my videos are about cameras. Some of them are about film photography in general and uh, different creative projects with film photography. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching.